I was scared about surgery. I was scared of how it would feel uh, when they pulled all my teeth out. I wasn't sure if they would do it while I was awake or while I was asleep. So I had a lot of anxiety. A lot of questions, you know, came, in, came into my head and played a big role because, you know, I was just scared. I wasn't sure what was gonna happen at first because they know that you're going in there with anxiety. They know you're scared. They know that you've had past trauma. And Nubia found all the answers for me on my consultation and comforted me right away. Today, we're talking about the fears of surgery day, the surgery itself, and what the recovery period is like before you sit in that dental chair. All that and so much more on today's episode of Dental Implant Talk, Stories of Real Patients. I'm your host, Emily, and today I'm joined by three dental implant patients who have undergone the dental implant procedure themselves, ultimately transforming their smiles and lives. So I want to start out by asking... What were your initial thoughts leading up to surgery day? Did you have any fears or concerns about anything in particular? Was it maybe the pain or going under for surgery? How did you how did you initially feel? I had been to numerous surgeries and dentists throughout the years just trying to fix my mouth. And so I wasn't really scared of the process of going through Nuvia because I was so confident that this was the final time. Mine was excitement. I'm not tell I'm every day I would count I was counting down to my husband. 29 days, 28 days, 24 days. I mean, I literally woke up with so much excitement and I felt really confident. My husband had gotten his teeth done before me. And so I already had confidence in the in Nuvia and what they had done for him. But I was excited to get it done and it be final, to not have to continue the process of fixing it and having it break, fixing it and having it break. So I was really ecstatic building up to the surgery. I was very anxious. I, I, I got, I, I hadn't gone to the dentist in so many years that it, I was scared. You know, um, it was difficult for me to kind of make the decision to begin with. I had gone many, many years, you know, with, with, with bad teeth. So um, I was scared. I was scared about surgery. I was scared of how it would feel uh, when they pulled all my teeth out. I wasn't sure if they would do it while I was awake or while I was asleep. So I had a lot of anxiety. A lot of questions, you know, came, in, came into my head and played a big role because, you know, I was just scared. I wasn't sure what was going to happen at first. Sean, did you have anything that... Um, helped you kind of relieve that anxiety going into it? Or like, what did that look like? You know, when I went to the consultation and they said that they were going to, you know, they, that you were going to be under anesthesia and you would be asleep the entire time, that gave me a sense of comfort because I knew that under anesthesia, we wouldn't feel a darn thing, you know, so that gave me a lot of comfort. Yeah, I could, I could sure imagine. <laughs> um, Cheryl, what about you? How are you feeling? Um, you know, I'm kind of a mix between Michelle and Sean. So I was super excited. Like I, um, once I went, you know, to the smile consultation and they gave me like my options of my different smiles, I took that printout and I put it up um, next to my bed. So every night I like visualize my new smile and I was so excited for it. I couldn't wait for the day to come. Of course, there were anxieties because, you know, I knew that my teeth were going to be taken out permanently and I wouldn't have them anymore. Right. I think probably more than anything, I wasn't worried about going under or anything. I really felt confident in Nuvia and their skills. I think it was more of what if like the implants failed. And then I'd be left with no teeth. So, you know, that was probably where my anxiety came in. Um, but I was super excited. I was super excited. Um, but I did have, you know, those thoughts, those thoughts that come in your mind about this is a permanent solution. But, you know, yes, I, you know, will have permanent teeth. But what if that fails? Then I'd be left with no natural teeth on top. Right. That's like, honestly, pretty scary. Like, what if something goes wrong? They're, they're, they're not there anymore, you know? So, right. so um, but it seems like your excitement was also helping your anxieties with that. So you can't go back once your teeth are pulled. This can be a scary thought when leading into surgery day, but I want to know what were you guys thinking of? Walk us through the timeline of surgery day. And if you had any last minute worries, what did that day look like for you? 
my surgery day, they were expecting me to be about four hours, I believe. It was pretty early. We got up. I was, I think I beat my husband to the car. I was so excited. Uh, she was just talking about the fear of, of not having your teeth if something didn't work out. All my teeth were falling out anyways. So if it didn't work out, I was still in the same boat. Luckily it did. But the day of, I got there and it was supposed to be fairly quick and it actually ended up taking over eight hours. Uh, while I was under anesthesia, my tongue was not, it's like not asleep. My tongue was wide awake while I was out and they had the oh, hardest Lord. time trying to get my tongue to say, it was just all coming out, trying to stop them, push them out. So it took over eight hours and the, way more than expected. Um, so yeah, I, when I woke up, I was fine. I didn't know I had given them any problems. Uh, I've never had that kind of reaction with anesthesia. But when I woke up, I was not bruised or I didn't realize I had been under for eight hours. I felt fine. So even if it takes a little bit longer, they, they, they took complete care of me and I would have never even known it. Wow. Eight yeah. hours. Yeah. It was, it was morning when I went and going into evening when I left. How, so when you woke up, what, what was, were you confused? What was, what was going on? Well, you, you don't realize it took that long until they tell you and you are a little bit, woo, but I found out on the way home cause it was, it was getting dark and it wasn't like that when I, when I arrived there and my husband was telling me that, that, and I, I believe the dentist told me too, it's still kind of a blur that my tongue was not cooperating and it was really putting up a fight trying to keep them out of my mouth under <laughs> anesthesia, which is so funny because shouldn't that be asleep too? Right. <laughs> it's very strong. I guess it's a very strong muscle. <laughs> they had some, lots some issues with it. Hey, but it seemed to work out. It seemed to work sure out for you. <laughs> well, Sean, what about you? All my teeth were broken off at the gum lines. I knew that, it, I knew that, I knew in my mind that they were going to take all my teeth out, but it didn't really hit me until afterwards. Um, and then I, you know, I had said to my girlfriend, oh, my God, I don't have any teeth, you know, when I went home. But I knew the next day I was going to get a brand new smile. So that eased my anxieties and, and, my, and, and my worries. But, you know, they, I, w I think I went in about 830 in the morning. I was going home about 430 in the afternoon. So it went pretty smoothly. Um, it was a little difficult you know, I, and scary thinking that, you know, all your teeth are going to be gone, but it is a permanent solution, you know, so you're not going to be left without teeth unless for some odd reason, you know, the implants don't take, but, you know, I think what there's like a 95% success rate. So, you know, what's to worry about? They really take care of you. And when you walk into that office, they make you feel like you're home and make you comfortable and make sure you have everything that you need. And they rub your shoulders and they smile and tell you <laughs> jokes. They make sure you get a nap. I know you're going home. So, you know, it's, it's, it, it, they, 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 they do whatever they can and, and whatever is possible to make sure that they do what's right by you and they make you comfortable because they know that you're going in there with anxieties. They know you're scared. They know that you've had past traumas. You know, not only they are they listening to every part of your story, but they listen to everybody's story. So they, they have a lot of different, you know, perspectives of what's going on with people's dental health. And they are very good at making sure that they find ways to make you comfortable. And I tell you what, it was a great nap. And I... <laughs> I'm, I wasn't scared after I got there. Only until I got there, I was anxious and scared. But once I got there, everybody just sets everything at ease and makes sure that you're as comfortable as can be. And they're just so pleasant that, you know, they really help take care of you. They, they make sure that you're comfortable. That's great. Well, I'm happy you had such a great experience. But you did also bring up a great point that I want to ask the other two. What was going through your mind knowing that, you know, you're going to go home surgery day without teeth and then come back in the next day? You know, were you worried about having no teeth for those 24 hours? Or was it more so this is why I came here? I'm getting my teeth 24 hours later. Um, that day that I went home with no teeth, um, I, I don't know how I, I, I just knew I needed time to like get over the, the trauma of surgery. Right. So I don't think I was expecting to have anything in my mouth, um, at that time. 
the thought of going back the next day and having teeth, I was, I was actually fascinated by just the thought of it, you know? Um, and that was one of the reasons why I was excited to call Nuvia because of the 24 hour technology. Um, because I knew that I couldn't, or I didn't want to be away from work that long, but I wanted it to be kind of like this seamless transition from going to going in to have whatever needed to have it come out and then going back the next day and getting it in and then coming to work and people being like, something's different, you know? <laughs> I can't quite put my finger on it, but you look just a little different. <laughs> yeah, so that day with no teeth, I mean, I, I you know, I know I talk funny, right? And <laughs> I was trying to make sure that... Um, I didn't eat anything that would kind of mess up, you know, what was going on in there with, you know, so that the next day everything would kind of be clean and sterile. But, um, but yeah, I, I, the only thing I do remember about that day was I wanted ice cream for some reason. I just wanted ice cream. Right. And I remember my husband, cause he's the cook. And so, um, he had asked them about like soup. You know, like, what could I make her for tonight for to eat? And um, he said, can I make soup? And I said, sure, but just be careful about the temperature because she might still be numb and everything. And then so when I said to him, I said, well, can I have ice cream? He said, they didn't say anything about ice cream. I said, but you didn't ask about ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> So he called the office, he called them and they said, yeah, ice cream actually would probably be really good for her gums. And so he's like, okay, you can have ice cream. <laughs> I was like, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, any great for ice cream. <laughs> I have a vision board. I've had this vision on my mind for years of this. My teeth on my vision board look exactly like this. So when they did them, it was like, oh my, it was the moment I had been waiting for. It was magical. It's absolutely fantastic. I'm so happy. <laughs> that makes me so happy. <laughs> Before we dive deeper into how these patients manage the recovery period, I want to remind you that these patients got their permanent set of teeth in just 24 hours. Yes, 24 hours after surgery, they had a brand new smile. So if you want to find out if you're eligible for permanent teeth in 24 hours, you can take our 60 second quiz waiting for you in the description below. You're eating your ice cream, you know, you didn't have your, your teeth in yet. Were you feeling any discomfort or pain yet? Like this is still surgery day. What, what were each of you feeling the day of? I think I was still kind of numb. Honestly, I mean, I really, I treated the, like they said, the aftercare instructions, I treated it like the gospel. So I continued to ice my face constantly. I did not lay down at all. I thought that's why I wanted ice cream because I felt like if I can ice the inside of my mouth and ice the outside of my mouth, I could really numb it up, you know, and keep that numbing sensation going. And then I did take the ibuprofen. I just tried to stay ahead of the pain. So I never felt pain. Not not the first day. I did not. It was the ice cream. It was the ice cream. <laughs> it was the ice cream. I'll tell you. Numb from the inside and the outside. That's the trick. <laughs> Sean, what about you? How were you? Uh, did you feel any discomfort the day of surgery, like after you were already home? I think I went home and I went to bed. I, I, but I put a, I put an old towel. That I, I, I didn't know that you were supposed to sit up in a chair, you know, for the first couple of days, or whatever. So I actually went home, put a, 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 an old towel down on my, on my, on my pillow, and I, and I laid down and I went out. And uh, I don't think I woke up until the next morning. And uh, you know, we, we actually got a slush on the, on the way. Uh, you know, and that helped a lot for any type of, you know, discomfort that I had, but I didn't really feel any discomfort at, at all until about day three. Day three is when I started feeling a little swelling, a little discomfort, started noticing a little bruising, but, uh, it wasn't bad. I, I mean, I had toothaches that were 10 times the pain and discomfort that I had, you know, after surgery, I was relieved wow. not to have a toothache. I was just so like surprised, like, wow, my teeth are gone. I don't have any more toothaches. This is amazing. Yeah. 
know? So the little bit of discomfort, I mean, I, they put your mouth through some trauma. You're getting your gums cut open. You know, you're having holes drilled in the bone and your jaw bones, you know, and, and you're getting, uh, you know, uh, titanium rods put in. That's not, you know, something to just bat an eye at. But Nubia makes it so that it, you know, such an invasive surgery is, is so simple to go through. And it was, I didn't have hardly any discomfort, not at all during the day of surgery, not even the day after. Like I said, I think it was about, not until about three days after. And because there's so many, so many people with such a strong level of confidence, they've done it for so, you know, so well for so many people. Like, it just makes you feel like, like you're in a comfort area. Like you're like, they're like, they're they're sure what they're doing they're reassuring you all the time and you could see all these people with beautiful smiles you know they're going to do a great job so you know it's it was it was a really good experience you know i'm with you on that sean because i remember my surgery day when i first met the surgeon and before the anesthesiologist did his thing right i remember asking the surgeon i was like so what do you think about my case? Is it a difficult one? And he's like, pretty yeah, run of the mill. I was like, I'm ready to go to sleep. Yeah, his confidence just sealed the deal. I was like, all right. <laughs> Time like, to that's go all to I bed. needed. That's all I needed. <laughs> it's like being held by your parents it's a real comfortable feeling they just make sure that you know they know that they want they want to know that you're feeling okay they're not just gonna if you're not feeling comfortable with something they they allow you to talk to them you know and and they hear you when you talk to them and, and express things you know so you know just keep a level of communication open if you're not comfortable with something let them know and they'll work with work with you you know they do an exceptional job explaining things to you and they don't get annoyed by your continuous questions no matter how much you're like oh should I ask this they want you to ask they have never even after my surgery and building up to the surgery they were always there to take my phone calls and and talk to me and listen to me and give me answers that I could that would settle inside of me well and so that was something I've never experienced at any other dentist I've ever been to it wasn't like hurry up get them in get them out we're done with you it was you feel like a part of the family Right. Absolutely. And Michelle, what about you? How uh, did you, do you remember feeling any discomfort the day of okay. surgery? Well, my sinuses, there, I mean, some people comment about sinuses. My sign, like the tip of my nose was numb for a while. The, my sinuses were a little numb, but immediately I started noticing my ears felt different. And it was just like, there was, I had, I had a lot of infection and things going on in my ears and I had no idea that it was from my teeth. So my teeth got better and my sinuses got better and all these things I was going to all these different doctors for to get fixed was relieved almost instantly from surgery. Sean and Michelle, you both bring up something where it's like, you know, once they were out, you were already kind of feeling better in other ways, you know, like your sinuses, Sean, you were saying, um, you know, like, since they were taken out, you're like, oh, I don't have to deal with that tooth pin anymore. Like, it's 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 crazy how much, you know, your teeth are affecting other areas. And I'm so happy to hear that they've solved some of those problems for you guys. Yeah, a few years ago, I was actually septic in the emergency room because I had an infection back, clear back here. And they, st they had no idea um, where it came from. They could not figure out how an infection got back there because I didn't have it in my ears. Mm. And I have had no issues with even the whooshing. I had whooshing in my ears. Wow. All of it, since I got my, my teeth pulled. It was just, they thought it was compacted infection that just, you know, worked its way back there. But my ears have been not a problem since the day I had surgery. I, actually, probably a couple of days after they, I had the antibiotics and it worked the stuff, the remaining stuff out but no issues it's it's been life-changing just in my years alone yeah sure it's nice not having to go to the er and get antibiotics for your teeth or think you're gonna die oh, wow. <laughs> true oh, oh my no. goodness i had no idea that my teeth were causing i mean i knew they caused me problems but i had no idea that they were affecting so many other parts of my body when did you start to feel any you know swelling or bruising or discomfort when did that begin and kind of what did that look like? So I didn't have a lot of, well, I didn't have any bruising 
So thankfully, I, I didn't have that. Um, I know. Yay! <laughs> I attribute that to the ice inside and out. <laughs> and also to not laying down. I was adamant about not laying down. I didn't even get in a recliner. I sat on my couch and I had a neck pillow and it was like a chaise lounge type and my feet were up and that was how I sat and slept for almost two weeks almost <laughs> like 10 10 days <laughs> at least and um because I did not want and and also I knew I had like a speaking engagement a week after surgery so like I had to get right ready like I knew I was gonna have to speak to over a thousand people and I needed number one, my speech to be right, but I also needed to look presentable. And so I was kind of adamant about making sure I followed all directions. So my bru I never experienced bruising, but swelling, I could see after I looked in pictures, I didn't really have a lot of it that I could notice visually, but in pictures, I look back, I had the little chipmunk cheeks, which were so cute, you know, um, but um, I did have that. At, I would say that I probably sat in probably like like Sean said about day three four um that's when I started to notice like tightness I, I did notice tightness and I started to feel like pressure um with the prosthetic because like you know everything just started to feel just kind of like it was pressure in there and I'm sure it was the the swelling that was going on but that was the only kind of discomfort I felt it was more of a tightening feel um but I didn't really swell that much or breathe at all so I was thankful for that <laughs> that's incredible wow mm. what about you Michelle oh uh, yeah I looked funny <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, it, it was funny because my kids would bring me down like frozen peas and we would wrap them around with an ice bandage but it was really only right here it was like a lower chipmunk <laughs> but <laughs> was in and I got some bruising up in here and down here probably I would say probably about two days in, I got some pictures of me with it wrapped up. The this the that frozen vegetables work really, really well. They're moldable. <laughs> also the peas of corn. I mean, you can like take one bag, a big bag, like a family size bag, and wrap it all the way around and it's amazing and it's soft and it's frozen. <laughs> but yeah, it, it really I only got swelling mainly on the lower part here. Um yeah. I didn't get a lot of black eyes or up in here or anything, but my whole lips were like, <laughs> oh. <laughs> like that. and I had, some, I had some bruising, but it, it wasn't a lot. It mm. to be expected. You just had massive surgery, <laughs> but I'm pretty fair skinned. And I would say that I didn't have very much bruising, more just swelling. I look mm. like a, a chipmunk with my nuts down here. My, <laughs> You were really just trying to store for the winter. <laughs> Wait, so um, how long would you say the swelling lasted then? Uh, it came about two days. I think the, the bruising probably started first, and I thought I was having a pretty good road. And then the, it's almost like as the numbing went off, the swelling came. Mm. I don't know if that's fact, but that's how it felt. And let's see, I when I... Probably a week in, I started noticing that it was at its peak mm -hmm. and starting to reduce. I mean, every day I started taking pictures and you could drastically see from one day to the next, the improvement. Mm -hmm. So it kind of goes up peaks and then goes down and you may have just some slight, slight bruising around your jawbone, but overall it was uh, to be expected, I didn't. I don't feel like it was anything abnormal or over the top. I I was pleased with how well it went, and just when I thought I couldn't handle anymore, it started getting less. So incredible! And it. did you feel any pain during that process or discomfort? Just the pressure. Like I had some sinus pressure, and I kept getting these little like swollen tongue things because I couldn't leave them alone. Mm -hmm. So I had some swollen taste buds. Those probably hurt worse than anything. <laughs> uh, but I, I stayed on top. My husband and I stayed on top of the icing and the, and I not remembering what they gave me for pain. I think it was something more than ibuprofen, maybe a Laura crab. I don't know. I think they may have changed it since then. 
I think they gave me mm. a few versions of like a Laura Tab five for three days and then but I don't even think I use those. Ibuprofen stayed on top of it. I have had a lot, a lot of mouth surgery. And so the pain, it, it felt about average for, I mean, considering everything that they did, right. it was different than, than a root canal or other than I was swollen and more purple. It, the pain was about a root canal. I didn't feel much pain at all until, you know, about days three through about 10 was my most uncomfortable days. Um, I But I just kept, you know, I found that staying hydrated helped a lot. I mean, it, once I had a dry mm. mouth, really bad, you know, and I, I realized I just wasn't drinking enough. I was sleeping too much and not getting up and drinking and staying hydrated properly. So once I started, you know, ingesting some broths and some lots of slurpees and water and, you know, I had some Gatorades and stuff. I started feeling a lot better. Um, day four, five, six, seven-ish, um, they did give me some pain medications, and I took those. And I took them on kind of a schedule to kind of prevent myself from feeling any pain if it were to occur. Uh, but honestly, I just stayed ahead of the medications, and I, I kind of switched between, you know, the ibuprofen and Tylenol and then maybe some pain meds. They were mild pain meds. And they only gave them to you for like five or six days. But, you know... It, I think staying ahead of the pain was a better option than trying to feel the pain mm -hmm. and to, to remedy it. So I just tried to stay ahead of the pain. I slept a lot and staying hydrated definitely helped because I noticed that once one day, like I said, when I didn't hydrate properly, the pain kind of kicked up a little bit. But other than that, it was great. I think that's the secret, staying on top of it. If you're supposed to have it at four hours, don't think, yeah. oh, I felt great and take it at five. It's harder to get back on top of it. If you let it get to where it's really painful again. If you just make a time and stick to it, it is you. It won't get that bad. You just have to stay on top of it. And like I said earlier, I mean, honestly, mm -hmm. I had two mistakes that were, you know, tenfold the discomfort and pain of, of healing from okay. from having this put in. And I tell you what, I I had days at nights, you know, that I laid in bed and I wished I could just, you know, take a mm -hmm. hammer to my mouth pound my mouth out, you know, or pound the teeth yeah. out of my mouth myself. So having the surgery, that was, it was, it, there was no comparison to the type of pain that I felt those days. So I was very happy that it was over with. <laughs> oh, toothaches are the worst too. Yeah. yeah. I would say, yeah. yeah. I would say it was the relief, right? Re it was relief to get yeah. them out, right? I had like these two teeth I called click and clack because they were loose. They were so loose. I had one on the top and one on the bottom. Nubia was so great to me because they had saw that I had some, even though they weren't doing my bottom, they saw that I had some really bad ones on the bottom that literally were like a health risk because they were so loose that they could fall out at any moment and I could go to, you know, like swallow it or in sleep. So they were like, we're just going to take all the infection out of your mouth and all the bad teeth out of your mouth. So yeah. click and clack were gone. And <laughs> I had no more infection in my mouth and I felt so good. It was like a relief to have them out. So I'm so thankful for them for that. That's really cool. That's actually really true because the pain that you go through for that surgery is to know that you're never going to have to have another toothache again, it's kind of like not that big of a deal because, you know, those toothaches, they're devastating. I mean, I can still remember it. They are not good. And that was nothing compared to the I haven't had a toothache in years. It's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, I'm glad you all are where you are today. I know it's definitely not an easy thing to just go through, but you made it, made it here. And that's, you should be super proud of yourself. So suffering many, many years with horrible mouth, you no know, dental care and, and, and diseases and, and rotten teeth and teeth falling out of your mouth. And, you know, uh, you know, having to go to the ER three, four or five times a year to get antibiotics because, you know, you, this isn't doing much for you anyway. So, you know, uh, it, it's a great way to have a permanent solution and not to have to go through the, the pain and the hell and the, the horrible aches and, you know, the things that we were going through before and to, to be able to, to live life again. It's just wonderful. You can't live life when you're in pain all the time. You just can't. And yeah. it's a thing to be out of pain. No one deserves that. No one no, deserves nobody. to live with that pain. 
Absolutely. So as we can see, each patient's experience varied, but it wasn't all they had worked up in their head. What do you think about that? Now for You Ask, They'll Answer. We'll have our guests address specific questions you have about today's topic straight from the Nuvia Smile Maker Club Facebook community. And if you want your dental implant question to be featured on one of our episodes, join our Smile Maker Club on Facebook, home to over 11,000 members. Shonda says, what should I expect to be able to eat after surgery? And Sharon says, we can't eat before surgery, obviously, but what can we eat after surgery? So what, what is your tips and tricks for eating after surgery? Well, I was told you're not supposed to slurp from a straw. Uh, I had smoothies with some protein powder in it that was more liquidy, so I was getting that full sensation. But I lived, I lived off smoothies for about two weeks. And we just changed out the vegetables, add, changed out the fruit, and just added extra protein and then extra liquid so that I could drink it like without a straw. I, I was told not to suck out of a straw. Um, so I, I lived off of, of smoothies for quite a while. I also had soup. Soup is really good. You got to watch the temperature. So I would say like right after surgery, um, I would stick to something that is something you don't necessarily have to chew. Um, but something that can be filling um, and something that's smooth, that's not going to get caught in the crevices of your new surgery. So soups, you know, monitor the temp, um, ice cream, of course, <laughs> um, you know, smoothies are great. Um, mashed potatoes are a good option. Um, so anything kind of like that would be really good, but I'd say in the recovery period during your four months of just the uh, plastic fork diet, um, there are so many options, so many options. So, um, my favorite is Chicken Alfredo, okay? <laughs> Chicken Alfredo, some pasta, um, always a good choice, mac and cheese, um, you know, anything that you can cut with a plastic fork. Do not limit yourself because there are so many things out there. But I'm going to not say so many things so that Sean can tell us what his favorite is and give us some other ideas. Guys, I came home on my way home. I stopped. You know, I stopped at a convenience store and got one of those big old slushies. You know, the 24 ounce slushies? Yeah. I found I did oh. a few of them. <laughs> Those were really helpful. And, uh, you know, a lot of sorbet, ice cream, of course. And then, uh, you know, uh, liquids like to stay hydrated, broth, soups. And then I kind of graduated after a few days into mashed potatoes, soft noodles, like uh, ramen noodles. Mm -hmm. And even if mm -hmm. you can break them up into little pieces, even your regular, any type of noodles, you know, I, and just kind of slowly chew, slowly swallow, you know, um, and, and things that, you know, I, I that I, I, I didn't have to chew, but I still kind of mimicked as I was swallowing to kind of train myself right mm -hmm. away. I knew that, you know, biting mm -hmm. my lip, biting my tongue, biting my cheek weren't the best situations, and that will happen, you know, as you're retraining. So just being careful and starting off with slow chewing right away was, was a big deal for me. But right after mm -hmm. surgery, Definitely the slushies, the ice cream, the uh, protein shakes. Those were really helpful. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, you, know, you can buy them from the store and just put them in your fridge a couple of days ahead of time. Make sure they're cold for you. And if you're eating soups and stuff, just mean just be watchful of the temperature. You get too hot and it might, you know, hurt a little bit. Or, you know, I, I, I would advise people to stay away from things that are real acidic, like tomato soup and things like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Spicy or acidic would kind of not feel real comfortable to a raw area in your mouth. So cr more creamy things and, and, and colder things were very beneficial for me. Mitzi said, so to prepare of the surgery day, what do I need? Taylor said, I have my surgery scheduled for Tuesday this week. If anyone has some tips and tricks for the days after the surgery, that would be great. Diana said, any tips for surgery and immediate recovery you'd like to pass on? So if you guys could just give maybe a one main tip that you would give to someone who's about to go into dental implant surgery? Just have a spot to go home to, you know, it's a comfortable spot. Have your, 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 you know, protein shakes and your, your foods and your things that you're going to uh, get healthy with, you know, uh, to heal with, have those ready and ready to go. Uh, maybe a support, little support system, like 
a family member or somebody there that can help you or get you a towel if you need it, stuff like that, just to be comfortable. Just to be comfortable and have a place you can rest and have the things that you need uh, after surgery uh, available to you. Yes, and I ditto that, the comfy spot, all the things you need. Um, Two things or three things you may not think about, but number one, my best friend during it all was my neck pillow. Would not travel without it. Okay, The neck (laughs) pillow is great for when you have to rest upright. Second thing is a mirror. Okay, because you are going to want to be looking at yourself. You're going to be smiling all the time. You're going to be inspecting what's going on. So a mirror. Okay, start practicing smiling. And the third thing is your phone. Okay, to take pictures. You want to photo journal your time, your recovery period. You want to have memories that you can go back on. Um, And then bonus is just a journal. Maybe you want to write and write about um, your journey to a new smile and to a new life. So those are my tips. Okay, we're going to do just one last question. And it's from Stacy. Just wondering when the swelling starts to go down, how long do I keep icing? Follow your aftercare plan. (laughs) 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 That's the best thing I can say. But no, I mean, the swelling, uh, as stated, you're probably going to start seeing it peak about day three, four. Um, Usually, I mean, everybody's situation is unique. So um, what I have heard other people talk about usually last about, you know, a week to 10 days, maybe up to two weeks. But if you have any concerns, please reach out to your Nuvia team. That's the best advice I can give to you. I agree with Sherelle 100 percent. I iced for about 10 to 15 days, 16 days, somewhere around there. Um, and then after about the, you know, two week period. Um, If you notice any swelling kind of come up or anything, or you just want to feel a little more comfort, you just put the ice back on your face and it helps. Um, But yeah, you got the first couple of weeks, definitely, and follow the aftercare instructions. Everybody does heal differently. Some people might only have swelling for seven, eight days. Some people might have it for three weeks. You know, so just the ice is very helpful. It's your best friend. That's what everybody called it when I was using it. It's my best friend. (laughs) (laughs) And the ice cream for the inside. Not my best friend, but it sure did (laughs) we hope you have more information and less fear about the dental implant surgery than you might have had before you started this video but what's it like adjusting to new teeth check out the episode the sensation of new teeth real patients share what to expect and don't forget that you can take our 60 second quiz to find out if you may be eligible for nuvia's permanent teeth in 24 hours